Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov Chess Channel and welcome to the Computer Chess Championship Season 13 Super Final between the two top engines Lila C0 and Stockfish. So after 200 rounds of battles we have now finally the winner, it's this new network based chess engine Lila C0, it really kicked some ass in this Super Final, it outplayed the Stockfish this table based engine with a result of 106 to 94. So great, great games uh, have been played in the Super Final, of course you cannot cover them all, they're playing all the time, And uh, but I mentioned in my previous videos that I'm expecting Lila C0, that I expected that Lila C0 will win the Super Final and we have also parallelly this TCEC Season 17 going on and in, this, in that final Lila C0 is also in the lead. So. Maybe Lila C0 is slightly better, but still better than Stockfish. Uh, it's uh, really incredible uh, what kind of games they played. And um, basically, I'm covering this, this chess engine game so much because these games are really important. They are the highest level that we can now see in chess. And uh, here I wanted to show you really this game because we can improve in particular opening preparations in particular lines of openings and i remember uh, that uh, i think two months ago i played a blitz game against top grandmaster bogdan lalic and he really kicked my ass in the spurts defense he played as black i played as white and got really destroyed uh, in the perch defense and uh, here i wanted to show you this game because we have a theoretical novelty played by Lila C0 so this particular line has never been played before and that's why I think for those who have trouble maybe to uh, troubles to play maybe against the perch defense it will be a perfect video and um, this theoretical novelty it's sort of a Mikal Tal attack because uh, here Lila C0 will sacrifice the pawn in order to get at least some kind of attack because the perch defense can be sometimes a positional game but in this game this theoretical novelty really helps you in order to make pro progress in order to make a fast attack so let's check out the game um e4 played by uh, lila c0 we have d6 the perch defense d4 knight to f6 attacking the e4 knight to c3 and here i want to, to already uh, to stop a little bit because now black has several choices but black can go into the check variation of the perch defense with the move g6 which can transpose of course into an austrian attack with f4 uh, or when I used to play the perch defense myself, I tried always to move e5. And believe me, d takes e5 followed with queen takes d8 doesn't bring you so much. I had really gr great success after, uh, after my opponent traded off the queens. But one of the other ideas uh, here by uh, black can be to play the move c6. And this was played in the game uh, here by uh, Stockfish. And in my game that I lost, as I mentioned, against Bogdan Lalic, I played the move knight to f3. And he played me here this very, very annoying move bishop to g4. This bishop uh, g4 uh, to g4 seems like a normal move, nothing special. We have a pin, we can play bishop to e2. But there is a positional idea about this move. After potential h3, here uh, bishop takes f3 can be played. Or bishop to h5 is even more annoying to handle. If you try to chase the bishop, it doesn't bring you so much. So mm, in my game, I... I really got outplayed because uh, he took my knight on f3 and managed to close the position with the move e5. So here uh, uh, Lila c0 uh, after the move c6 played the very important move f4. It leaves you a more flexible position in order to create maybe some pawn breakthrough possibilities with the move um, uh, e5. And this is still not this theoretical novelty that I wanted to show you in this game. Here queen to a5 was played. Here we have bishop to d3 as the threat was uh, by black to take out this e4 pawn. Uh, the knight is pinned a little bit by the queen. So that's why bishop to d3, very important move. And now e5, uh, the queen covers here this e5 also and attacks also the knight on c3. Knight to f3, this is still common theory. Uh, nothing special so uh, has happened so far. And now knight from b to d7. Castling, uh, played by uh, Lila C0, bishop to uh, e7, and now king to h1. Very important move, because um, the idea of uh, white is now uh, to play, in some occasions, the move bishop to e3, and if this bishop gets challenged with potential knight to g4 moves, then we can play the move bishop to g1, everything is perfectly fine, so this king to h1 is really a nice positional move, and we could also try to play maybe something like rook to g1 followed with g4 and try to maybe uh, create a flank attack on the king side but um, here lila c0 after castling 
didn't wait and this is now the move the new move that hasn't been played so far it's to move g4 immediately cracking the position great great attack the problem now for uh, black here is that uh, here you see white has already advanced four pawns in the center although we have battled with our knights and with these two pawns in the center but it's a little bit too late it's a little bit too passive in the game, uh, of course, knight takes g4 was played. We have d takes e5. Uh, after d takes e5, now the move f5. And the position now in the center is closed. We have lost a pawn. Uh, lost a pawn. But the main now idea is to play rook to g1 and attack the g file. In the game, king to h was played. Uh, king to h8 was played by um, Stockfish. Queen to e1. The idea is now to attack again the knight and play rook to g1, attacking the g7 weakness. Uh, I'm pointing out that this bishop's activity is perfect uh, per, uh, because it attacks also this very important h6 and here you could try maybe b5 this is one of uh, stockfish suggestion and as I'm uh, analyzing the games on stockfish on the stockfish engine uh, stockfish uh, suggest in one particular line to this move b5 but it could be a mistake because now you get immediately rook to g1 attacking the knight this is the problem you if you go back then we can play simply uh, here queen to g3 attacking the g7 and you would be forced here to play something like g6 in order to uh, close the g5 but now bishop to h6 is very dangerous the rook is hanging and uh, if black tries maybe some counter attacks with knight to h5 then we can simply play queen to h3 I just wanted to show this particular line how dangerous this attack can be. Knight to c5 ideas are not so dangerous because uh, this bishop is bad anyway. If you chase this bishop on d3, nothing special will happen. Here, if you try b4, you see there is this tactical threat we can immediately take. Queen takes h5. As you cannot take uh, here g takes h5 because you get bishop to g7 king to g8 and now you get bishop to uh, f6 the discovered check and it would be game over so uh, that's why after this move queen to e1 uh, here by um, lila c0 stockfish realized these problems on the g file and tried to play this prophylactic move bishop to c5 covering the g1 so the rook cannot come into the game through the g file at least stopping the attack for a little bit but now lila c0 played uh, an important move queen to h4 and you see how white pieces now are in perfect harmony we have an attack on the h file the rook will come somehow into the game uh, in the game knight from uh, knight to f6 was played if you try here to cover with knight from d to f6 then you get a very tricky move h3 you can play maybe knight to e3 uh, attacking the rook but the main idea of this move bishop to c5 is to prevent this rook to, to come on, to, uh, on the g file and now with the move rook to g1 again uh, white has some dangerous attacks the queen is aiming on the h file basically what we need to do here is maybe somehow improve the position of the knight knight to e2 knight to g3 maybe knight to uh, h5 deflecting the knight from the defense and really many many attacking possibilities here for white black is on the defensive side so in the game after the move queen to h4 knight to f6 was played retreating and i wanted to point you also out this system these knights are basically uh taking uh, they're taking over its other squares so of course you see this knight is blocked out by its own knight and its own bishop so this knight can never move knight to b6 is not such a powerful idea and this bishop is again blocked out by this pawn on f5 again uh really Lila c0 played this positional setup uh, really this um, boa constrictor sort of chess game with a pawn down which is an incredible thing and has really this huge activity and uh, really a great attack so in the game knight to g5 uh, with the preparation to attack this uh, h7 one of the main ideas is uh, somehow maybe to deflect this knight and trying to attack this h7 weakness in the game queen to d8 was played and now rook to f3 rook lift very important with the idea to finally uh, attack this h7 a6 a better idea uh, here by black is uh, to play the move b5 and this was probably stockfish main mistake this b5 is necessary because you're not allowing this bishop to come on c4 still white has a comfortable game i think because white can play something like knight to e2 uh, again knight to g3 knight to h5 or similar ideas maybe bishop to d2 trying to uh here double up rooks on the f file maybe rook to h3 then followed with rook to f3 
but in the game a6 was played and it's a little bit too slow because we have now the opportunity to play bishop to c4 attacking this f7 weakness and still if you try uh, maybe to protect this pawn uh, with the move queen to e7 a4 closes the queen side you see this b5 b5 move i think was really necessary by black now b5 is not a possibility because we can simply take uh, here a takes b5 after something like c takes b5 we have the opportunity to take out with the knight pawn on b5 as your rook is hanging <coughs> black doesn't have the rook connection so here it would be a lost game i think for black but uh, again even if you don't play this b5 if you try for instance something like uh, h6 here if you try to kick away the knight the problem is that we don't have re uh, to retreat as we have the queen on the same file uh, like the king we would still continue with some potential rook to h3 moves and now what to do uh, knight to h7 seems like a logical move here for black you see that's after this uh, line if black for instance plays the move queen to e7 knight to uh, h7 seems like a good idea but again we don't have troubles because we can simply play this move queen to h5 and if you try again to attack here maybe the queen uh, with the move knight to f6 then we have the opportunity to play knight takes f7 because we have three times attacked this f7 weakness if you don't want to lose material you could go maybe here um, knight to g uh, g8 but it's even more dangerous so the best way here i think is even to take out the knight this very annoying knight but let's see what happens if you for instance go king to g8 then we have the opportunity to play this very very tricky discovered attack by by the bishop and you have to cover uh, with the move of bishop to e6 but now we can play a simple move queen to e2 this is the main tactical preparation by Lila C0. You see, you cannot take the queen, and after trades of bishops, the queen comes very actively into the game. Still, you cannot cover uh, with the rook, but basically the best move is here to give up maybe the rook. If you go retreat with the king, then you get knight to g6, uh, here the fork, and uh, you lose the queen. So that's why after this move, bishop to c4, Stockfish saw the mistake and played the move h6 and here Lila c0 simply took knight takes f7 rook takes f7 bishop takes f7 and we are up the exchange great attack as i said this great theoretical novelty basically it's a winning game now for white uh, but let's see the uh, the continuation queen to f8 and now uh, bishop to e6 still there are many pieces on the board of course you have to struggle for a win but this in this top engine level uh, in this particular position i think uh, that uh, lila c0 will win 100 games out of 100 games so whatever stockfish plays here this is simply a bad position for white so in the game knight to h7 was played bishop takes um, d7 bishop takes d7 a simple idea by lila c0 searching for simplifications not to trying to do, do uh, to go into complex lines now bishop to e3 again with the idea to trade off pieces bishop to e7 queen to h3 knight to g5 bishop takes g5 bishop takes g5 and now rook to g1 attacking the bishop you have to retreat again we have some tactical threats on the gh file uh, bishop to f6 and now rook to d3 when we see this position still as i said you have to battle for win because uh, black has this dangerous bishop pair still these bishops are blocked out but if these bishops come into the game somehow maybe here if the bishop comes on c6 maybe uh, a weak a weak pawn would be this e4 pawn and one of the main ideas now when we play with a rook and a knight against two bishops is to get rid of at least one of these bishops so let's see how lila c0 managed to do that the bishop to e8 was played the knight to um knight to d1 we have rook to d8 rook takes d8 bishop takes d8 and now uh, knight to uh, f2 we have uh, c5 and this move allows now uh, lila c0 to target uh, here this d5 weakness this is the main weak square in the position so that's why knight to d1 retreating again on the same square we have uh, b5 knight to c3 bishop to f7 and now finally knight to d5 uh getting uh, a very nice square for our knight in the game queen to uh, d6 was played and now queen to h uh, queen to g4 you cannot uh, here in the continuation bishop to f6 was played basically you cannot play of course bishop takes d5 after e takes d5 you cannot take this pawn as your g7 pawn is hanging so you cannot do anything bishop to f6 is really a necessary move knight takes f6 here was played and now finally mission accomplished uh, after queen to f6 we have now a simplified position in which lila c0 is up the exchange and of course has a winning endgame uh, this is now move 
33 so i just wanted to skip a little bit forward as many of these moves were played which in basically nothing happened i just wanted to move to uh, move 78 uh, so in that was the critical end game motif here by uh, leva c0 in that move basically it was game over as stockfish took the queen after f takes uh, g6 we have f takes g6 and now the position is even more simplified now we have a new position which of course the rook is better but now one of the main ideas in this end game is to create a pass pawn so how to do that let's see how lila again managed to do that after king to g8 we have rook to d3 uh, sacrificing the pawn but if you take the pawn then you get checkmate on, on the d file so here in the game uh, king to f8 had to be played but now rook to d6 bishop takes uh, bishop takes e4 and now finally rook to b6 we have king to uh, e7 and now finally lila c0 managed to get a pawn i'm not going to show you now the whole uh, end game because now we're in move 83 and the game was prolonged till move 152 so from an end game's perspective this is of course completely winning all all uh, black can take this pawn but still this pass pawn will never be able to catch up or you have to give up your bishop so as i said uh, this is now completely completely winning for white okay i hope that you enjoyed this game it was really a great uh, super final between the two top engines uh, Lila C0 was better I, uh, as I said I still think that Lila C0 will win even this TCE season 17 meanwhile you can watch my other commented chess game so far uh, here is the link and you can also watch my best chess games of all time if you want to see humans battling in their own best chess games that have been played in chess history and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and uh, chess is the best of course